Hello! This episode is a little bit different. It's uh, sort of a forensic examination of a real-world logo from the TV series Stranger Things. Uh, so this episode's actually in two parts. The first part focuses on just the pure vector shapes and silhouettes. The next part will focus on the Photoshop effects with the glows and neon effects and all that stuff. That episode's a little bit shorter. I hope you dig it. Please enjoy. ITC Bengia is kind of an older uh, typeface. Looks like this. You've probably seen this on like uh, horror novel covers. Uh, it's been used in some Star Trek. It's pretty classic. I think it's even been used in some D&D &D supplements too. It just has this uh, interesting uh, shape to some of these curves and like this E has this odd slant to it. Uh, the serifs are kind of slab but still have that daintiness that kind of curves upwards. Uh, the ascenders and descenders are just very distinctive. So I'm just going to type out the word stranger things and right off the bat we can see that they've adjusted the uh, x height for this because you can see that when you just type out stranger things in the standard font uh, it's actually quite a bit shorter. Uh, what they did was just slightly stretch any of the vertical columns that uh, that you see here. So say for example this T, this H, this I, this N, they just stretched it just a little bit to kind of get that spooky feel on it. Um, even the S's and the R's are a little bit stretched a, a bit tall. Uh, now this is very dangerous territory because uh, if you just, just straight up like stretch text, uh, it's never going to look as good as uh, if you did it with some more finesse. Uh, just by way of example, I'm going to stretch this out using uh, standard InDesign things and you can see that uh, when you stretch it, a lot of the proportions are, are kind of lost uh, in this. The slabs are, uh, slab serifs are a little bit too tall. Uh, the curves are f sort of flattened out and um, made sort of inelegant. Um, and it needs it's a little bit more of a delicate eye whenever you're working with stuff like this and, and modifying fonts. Um, there are ways you can do slight modifications to letter forms like this and it will be okay. Uh, you will survive and the world will not end. Um, but first I want to uh, set up some of the basics here. Like, for example, the R and the S in Stranger are much larger than uh, the rest of the uh, letters and they hang low. So uh, the easiest way to do that is just select uh, the letters that you want to enlarge, make them a bit bigger. Uh, you just shift the baseline of those letters down a bit and uh, suddenly, hey, uh, it's a little bit lower. We're tapping this down now. Um, next up, uh, the kerning. Uh, you'll notice that they've modified the S here to uh, sort of go flush with the T. Uh, they've also nudged in the R and the A, the A and the N, um, and they've actually cropped the, the left side of the G so that it doesn't merge in with the N but still comes in closer than a G normally would with this typeface. Uh, they didn't modify this S. This, this S is still standard. Uh, overall, it just looks like this has relatively tighter kerning than uh, than normal. So I'm just going to nudge this kerning over here, uh, or rather the tracking, um, a few thousands of an M space. Uh, this G and N need to be brought in a bit more, and I'm going to do that with... Uh, yeah, yeah, just a little bit more. Uh, probably so that the serif of the and just barely hangs over the curve of that G. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And when you're working with uh, layout and typography and doing logo design, you start seeing some patterns. For, for example, uh, this N and G are directly above the N and G here. And I'm sure whoever uh, did the layout on this or did the logo design for this spotted that and realized, okay, I'm gonna have an NG and an NG right on top of each other. I need to uh, either put a lampshade on that and, and really call that out or blend everything together so it doesn't stand out because when you have repeated patterns like that it can really make things uh, kind of seem off kilter. Um, part of that is they've adjusted the kerning between the H and the I and spaced that out just a little bit. Uh, they've also spaced out the kerning on the I and the N so that those are separate and I can tell you that's probably because they saw that if you merged uh, the kerning between the H and the I and the N too much you just get this odd shape where the I and the N and the H just kind of blend together and you don't really have anything that's actually legible because you've uh, kind of destroyed the silhouette of that I. Uh, what else did they do? 
it looks like they brought in the kerning of the S and the G a little bit so that the uh, little overhang part of that crossbar on the G uh, hangs over the lower left serif of that S just a bit. Now that we've got more or less everything set up uh, in with the basic type tools that InDesign offers, I'm gonna uh, copy this text block bring it over to the left outside of my canvas so that I can come back to it later if I need to. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in over here and InDesign allows you to take a type and create outlines and that will just turn all of these letters into individual vector shapes. Use the arrow tool. In my case, I'm using the white arrow tool. Make sure you're selecting all the points in the shape that you actually want to select and not selecting the ones that you don't want to. And I like to nudge up and down just to make sure I'm selecting the one thing that I actually do want. So for example, if I had accidentally missed this point on the top left, I can nudge up and down and see, oh, hey, that point's not moving. So I'll make sure to select it. So I'm gonna cut it and then paste in place so it lands right in the same spot. And now I can manipulate that, uh, that S as I wish. And the way they set up this top, uh, top ascender for the uh, S on Stranger Things is slightly nudged over to match the curve of that T, or rather the angle of that T. So I'm going to nudge it over just a bit. And you can see that there's some connected curves here that need to be adjusted as a result. Uh, and there's one extra little curve here. You know what? I'm actually going to use the Convert Anchor tool, zoom in a little bit more. I don't know if you can see this on screen, but I'm using the convert anchor tool to just select that point and then just completely redefine that curve, stretching it out, flattening it out so it doesn't have this odd angle and a split in that curve. So uh, zooming out a bit, you can see that it's, um, and what else did they do to this? It looks like they sharpened that serif on the S as well. So uh, we can do that here by removing one point from that, uh, from that serif. Do, 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 there, all right. And then we can adjust the lower part there. And that pretty is pretty close. All right, cool. Getting there, getting there. OK, now uh, the height of these letters is uh, slightly larger in, uh, in the logo than it is in, uh, in the font itself. Uh, once it's an, a vertical, or rather a vector object, you can also just stretch it just like any, any object and just go willy nilly. and. Uh, do, do horrible things like this, play around and, and experiment. And part of how you learn uh, typography and learn how to do graphic design is kind of making these silly mistakes, doing these fun things and, and figuring out how do they do that. Uh, so in my case, I'm the way I figure they did it is uh, for the most part, they just grabbed the lower half of these letters uh, with their uh, with the arrow tool and made sure that they were selecting all of the points in the lower half of these letter forms. And I bet they just, uh, once they had them selected, they nudged them down a little bit. All I'm gonna do is select the T, H, I, and G. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna experiment here. See if, see how well it can serve. Uh, this can survive this. I'm just going to select the R and the A and see how well it'll actually handle uh, being stretched out like this. I may have to select a couple more points here just to make it work. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That A is a little off. It looks like I've got a curve here that I need to smooth out. So again, I am using the convert direction point tool. Let's smooth that out just a little bit. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that point and see if that helps smooth it out a little bit more. Yeah, all right. I think I'm going to have to move this outside point a little bit further in to thin that stroke and make it match. It looks like what they did was uh, they grabbed the lower right part of that N and made it a little bit more straight and vertical. Uh, they may have extended that curve even. Uh, first, let me before I start adding points to this, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if they actually did extend that curve a little bit. And 
play around with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, not quite. Uh, it looks like this would have to be brought in a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah. All right, so I'm selecting the uh, basically the lower half of this G and trying to bring it down a bit. Uh, I'm gonna go four and then deselect the middle point here and then go with the remaining four. One, two, three, four. Deselect that midpoint. One, two, three, four. All right. Let's see if I can just bring this down a little bit too. One, two, three, four. Maintain the maintain the curves as much as possible, you know. And I'm gonna, I guess I'm just gonna grab this R and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, for the time being, I am going to do the same thing to this end that I did to the end that was above it. It looks like I missed the top of this crossbar, and in fact, uh, it seems that they did not move that in their logo, so I'm just gonna lift that up so it matches roughly what they did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And yeah, and it looks like actually they, they sharpened the top serif of this G as well, so uh, that is easily done by just removing the furthest point from this G. Um, I'm making a rectangle. I'm just gonna fill it with a color. Let's just go with black. Copy that bar because I'm gonna have to reuse it. Make sure it's exactly the same width. Uh, let's do that and bring it in over here. Okay, cool. So now I've got it over both G's. So uh, first I'm gonna select this first bar, select the text that's behind it, use the Pathfinder tool to, um, to subtract and that just knocks out that part of the shape. And then I can select the other points from that G and just delete them. I'll do the same here with this G and take those out. I just have to select these points now, delete those, cool slightly enlarge things just a tiny bit just a tiny bit so that they uh, so that these letters are centered with each other a bit more I'm grouping stranger and I'm grouping things as individual separate ob uh, groups rather and I'm going to center them and now the last little piece of this is going to be that cross uh, cross line at the top and if you want to know how to get the neon effect. I'm gonna go straight into Photoshop right after this, so stick around. On the top, does not line up with where the crossbar ends on the bottom. See that? Basically the crossbar lines up with the lower, with the uh, ex extended curve of the top half of the R, but not at the bottom. Weird stuff, weird stuff you gotta, you gotta look at, but it's important to learn those kinds of things and, and those optical tricks to make things look like they should when in fact uh, they're uh, geometrically possibly uh, asymmetrical. So pulling that over here, da, da, da. adjust that things a little bit more. Okay. Make that just a tad larger. Cool. So there's the outlines. Um, and uh, ho hopefully you learned something there. Um, I'm going to go straight into Photoshop. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and support the rest of this series on Patreon.